Hi everyone, my name is FlygonHG, and this is the video of my attempt at a hardcore Nuzlocke of Pokemon Emerald using only normal type Pokemon. To see what I define as hardcore Nuzlocke rules, check out the description below. But in short, no items in battle, no overleveling past the gym leader's ace, and we're playing on set mode. Last time I played Pokemon Emerald, people responded really positively to it. Never in my wildest dreams did I think I'd get so much unanimous support. Well, mostly unanimous. Anyways, this time I'm tackling Emerald with normal type Pokemon, which I don't have a whole lot to say about. Normal type Pokemon are white bread, solid if not a little bit unexciting. Ghost and rock types will be a problem, which will make the early game a bit difficult, but once we get access to some coverage TMs, it shouldn't be much of a problem. Emerald also has a solid number of normal types to choose from. Unfortunately, Zangoose is not in Pokemon Emerald. Less unfortunately, I can't catch a zero, but somehow I'll manage. And finally, I'll have to choose between Dodrio and Girafferidge, because both are in the Safari Zone. But that still leaves us with a total of 11 encounters. Let's see how it goes. Quick reminder before we start, I play with Species Claws, so I'll be able to reroll encounters until I get a unique encounter, but I can only use one of each unique evolution line. Okay, let's do this. I start my journey by selecting Trico. Trico gives me Torchic, which is theoretically the hardest for us to fight since it'll have stab fighting type moves, but May kinda sucks, so it doesn't really matter. As soon as I get Pokeballs, I head to Route 102 to catch a Zigzagoon. This will be my true starter for the run. I name him Bob. I then immediately try to release my Trico, but no matter how hard I try, it won't let me. So I discard him into the recesses of the box, never to be seen again. From here, I head towards the first gym and start picking up new team members along the way. There are four more normal type encounters I can get before the first gym. First is a Talo from Route 104, who I named Tom. Next is a Slackoth from Rustboro Woods, who I named Sam. Then, north of Rustboro, I catch a Wismer in Rust Turf Tunnel. I've actually never known the name of this tunnel before writing this script. I've always thought it was just called Wismer Tunnel. Anyways, I named my Wismer Will. And lastly, I catch a Skitty on Route 116, and I name her Sarah. After leveling up all my new team members, we take on the first gym leader, Roxanne. Roxanne uses rock types, which are incredibly difficult for us to handle. So much so that I actually just avoid all of Roxanne's gym trainers. All of Roxanne's Pokemon have really high defense stats, and with my current level cap, none of my Pokemon can learn special moves. In fact, at this current level cap, only Will can learn a move that isn't resisted by rock types, so this is going to be pretty tough. But as the saying goes, where there's a Wismer, there's a way. I lead Sarah as Roxanne leads Geodude. Immediately, Sarah hits a Sing to put Geodude to sleep. Then I start using Growl as Geodude sleeps. After a few turns, I switch to Sam, and Geodude wakes up. But Sam is pretty bulky. Even when Geodude hits a crit, he doesn't take that much damage from it. The only problem is that Sam has the ability Truant, which means he loafs around every other turn. But over the course of many, many turns, I start whittling away at Geodude's health. Geodude sets up defense curls and does small bits of damage, but I make sure to stay healthy by spamming slack off when I'm in range of a crit. This is a battle of attrition. Slowly but surely, we're lowering Geodude's HP. But more importantly, we're stalling her out of her PP. It takes a very long time, but eventually, Geodude runs out of PP on all of its moves except Defense Curl. And once I'm sure it's stuck in Defense Curl, I switch to Will. Once Will is in, I start using Howl, which ups my attack. I max out Will's attack by Howling six times. After that, I knock out the Geodude with a few pounds and astonishes. This takes a little bit since Geodude has maxed out its defense stat, but eventually it does go down. Roxanne's second Geodude comes in, but two Astonishes take it out after it just does some damage with a Rock Tomb. Last is Roxanne's Nose Pass, who has crazy high defense, and she pumps that even higher by spamming Harden. It's clear here that Will is going to need to just get off as many attacks as he can until he dies. It's a suicide mission, but if he gets Nose Pass low enough, then the rest of our team should be able to whittle him down without any other casualties. He'll be remembered as a hero. Just kidding! Will gets a clutch critical hit on the Nose Pass exactly when he needs it, bypassing Nose Pass's defense buffs and winning us the battle. Good job, William. Good job. After this, it's pretty much a straight shot to Brawly. Along the way, Sam evolves into Vigoroth, so he no longer has the Truant ability, which makes him significantly more useful. 
Now you might be thinking that Brawly and his fighting types are going to be pretty tough for us to deal with, since Normal is weak to fighting, right? Nope. Tom one-shots Brawly's entire team. Talo and Swellow have the ability Guts, which doubles your attack stat if you have a status condition. So by pre-poisoning Tom on a wild tentacool, I can start the battle with a doubled attack stat. Brawly's fighting types don't stand a chance. On the way to the third gym, Bob evolves into Lanoon, and William the Conqueror evolves into Loudred. Here we have to fight our rival May, but a pre-poisoned Tom manages to wing attack his way through her entire team. This is a pretty great strategy, especially when Tom evolves into Swellow. But unfortunately it won't work against Watson, because his Magneton resists Talo's attacks. So we'll need to go in with a different strategy. What's my strategy? It's called completely overestimating my damage output. I lead Sam as Watson leads Voltorb. I go for a scratch, and Voltorb goes for a spark, which of course paralyzes Sam. Why wouldn't it? On the next turn, Voltorb takes his own life with a self-destruct. Thankfully that doesn't crit, so Sam survives. Electrike comes out, so I decide to go for a yawn as Electrike uses Howl. I switch to Will as Electrike goes for another Howl, and then falls asleep. I Howl three times as Electrike manages to stay asleep, and then I knock out the Electrike with a pound. This of course triggers static, but at least I had the foresight to give one of my Pokemon a Cherry Berry. Magneton comes out, and Rock Smash does significantly less damage than I was hoping for. On the next turn, Will gets hit by a hard shockwave, as Magneton gets hit by another Rock Smash. This happens to lower his defense though. I'm hoping Magneton will just go for a Super Potion here, but he just hits Will with a shockwave, knocking him out. I bring in Bob, who hits a headbutt, but Magneton manages to hold on with a sliver. Thankfully it flinches, but now Magneton is going to heal, so I go for a Tail Whip. Another lucky flinch means that I'm able to knock out the Magneton in a few turns without taking any damage. Last is Manetric. I hit a headbutt as Manetric uses Thunder Wave. Next, Manetric uses Howl as Bob gets fully paralyzed. Of course. Then Manetric goes for a Shockwave, and I get fully paralyzed again. I'm in range of a crit here, but I kind of need to risk it. Manetric uses Howl, and I go for a headbutt. Thankfully I land this one. Manetric then uses a shockwave to leave us with a sliver, and I get fully paralyzed again. Sure. This means that I need to sack to get a safe switch into Tom. Sadly that burden falls on sweet Sarah. So she comes in and gets hit by a quick attack. But wait, her cute charm activates. Okay, so I can save Sarah's life if Manetric is immobilized for just a few turns. So okay, Manetric gets immobilized for the first turn, so I use Tail Whip. And then Manetric gets immobilized again. Ah, but I miss a sing. I need to hit a sing to safely switch into Tom. Unfortunately, our luck ends here. On the third turn, Manetric lands a quick attack, taking out Sarah. Rest well, Sarah. Tom comes in to hit a quick attack, winning us the battle. But that was a pretty brutal battle. So much hacks and so many status afflictions on both sides. I went in without a real plan, and I got punished for it. But like a hit rock band from the early 2000s, we move along. As Heaven gains two new angels, we also gain two new team members. From Route 113, we catch a Spinda and name her Sally. And on Route 114, we catch a Swablu and name her Sandy. Sally the Spinda is a pretty solid catch, but since Swablu loses its normal typing upon evolution, we can't evolve Sandy into an Altaria. So that's a bummer. Nevertheless, after some Team Magma stuff, which I'll skip, we get to Flannery's Gym. If you watched my grass only challenge, you'll remember that this was a massive brick wall for me. Fortunately, it's much easier here, since I'm not weak to fire types and Sam has an amazing move pool that is perfect for setting up. Much like the Breloom from my grass only challenge, I've taught Sam bulk up, so I start by setting up bulk ups. But to make sure that Numel doesn't get cheeky and try to hit me with an overheat, I use Encore, which locks him into magnitude. It's a little scary, because a critical hit magnitude of 9 or 10 will definitely kill me through my bulk up buffs but the odds of getting a high magnitude roll and a critical hit is pretty unlikely. Thankfully it works out, and once I've gotten off enough bulk ups to kill the Torkoal in the back, I sweep through her entire team with Silk Scarf boosted returns. That gets us an easy badge number 4. From here, it's a straight shot to the 5th gym leader. We just need to take care of a few easy gym trains.
Whoops. So, VGC World Champion Wolfie Glick recently did an Emerald Nuzlocke, and he lost a Pokémon to this exact trainer in the exact same way. I'm not saying that I'm better than the World Champion, I'm just saying that we're the same. That's a pretty unideal loss, but I do have Sam, which is all I need for this next gym battle, so I'll be okay. Like me, Norman uses his normal type Pokémon. Unlike me, he's cheated and taught all of his Pokémon level up moves that they can't access yet. Sure, he could have bred the moves onto them, I guess, but that doesn't explain his level 31 slaking, which is straight up impossible. Either way, his hacked Pokémon are no match for us. He leads Spinda, and I lead Bob, who starts with a sand attack. Then I switch to Sally, who puts the Spinda to sleep. Then I switch to Sam, and set up two bulk ups. A return knocks out the Spinda, and then his slaking comes out. I anticipate a counter, so I go for another bulk up. After his loafing turn, I try to lock him into counter with Encore, but I guess it fails since he was loafing. Thankfully, he goes for another counter, so I Encore him that turn and then set up another bulk up as Slaking is stuck using counter. Return knocks out the Slaking in one shot. Then, it's just two more returns to knock out his Vigoroth and his Lanoon. Cheaters never prosper, Dad. Now that we have access to Surf, I can go to Route 115 and catch a Jigglypuff. I name him Joe. At the Weather Institute, I'm given a cast form, and I name him Greg. Now, at first I was stumped about how to handle Greg. Am I allowed to use a weather move and change his type? Would that be breaking my normal type only rule? Would that prompt some jackass in the comments section to tell me that I've failed a challenge with made-up rules? After thinking about it for roughly 10 seconds, I decide that it's not worth the effort, and I dump him into the box. But we have a similar problem with our next encounter, a Kecleon from Route 120, who I named Kevin. I decide that I actually want to use Kevin, and I also decide that since I can't purposefully change his typing, since his typing changes based on enemy attacks, that Kevin is fair game regardless of what type he happens to be. After all, Kecleon is still just a normal type. Maybe I'm thinking too hard about this. Then again… Anyways, Winona is up next, but she leads Swablu and I lead Sam. I immediately go for a bulk up. I lock Swablu into Aerial Ace with Encore so that it can't use Parish Song and then I set up bulk ups. Even when Swablu crits, it does nothing. It's a Swablu. They suck. I should know. Since there's a Skarmory waiting for me in the back, I go ahead and set up all six bulk ups. Then, it's just a single return to knock out all of her Pokémon. Okay, technically Pelipper survives a return by using Protect, but even Skarmory goes down in a single return. And that's an easy sweep for badge number six. After this, I level up Joe to learn Body Slam, so it's time to evolve him into Wigglytuff with a Moonstone that I got from the Meteor Falls. I'll be honest, Joe doesn't do much in this playthrough, but look at him. He's perfect just the way he is. I also get my encounter in the Safari Zone. I decide to go for Doduo instead of Girafferig because it has a higher catch rate. Plus, not to trivialize Sandy's contributions to the team, but I could use a strong flying type to replace Tom. I named the Doduo Dan, and pretty soon after, Dan evolves into Dodrio. I make sure to train him on Shuppet to get max attack EVs. While training up to the next level cap, Sam starts to evolve into a Slay King, but I decide to keep him as a Vigoroth. The combination of Bulk Up, Slack Off, and Encore makes him such an incredible setup sweeper already that the added attack and bulk isn't really worth it to deal with Truant. Anyways, time to take on Tate and Liza. Since it's a double battle, I can't do a Bulk Up sweep, so I don't have a great strategy for this. I lead Kevin and Dan into their Zatu and Claydol. A try attack from Dan and a Shadow Ball from Kevin take out the Claydol, but Kevin is incredibly slow, so Claydol does unfortunately get off an Earthquake. On the next turn, a Drill Pack and a Shadow Ball kill the Zatu as it just wastes time using Calm Mind. Solrock sets up a Sunny Day though, so things are starting to look kinda bad. I switch out Dan for Joe, as Lunatone just uses Calm Mind, and Solrock uses Solar Beam on Kevin. Kevin manages to retaliate with a critical hit Shadow Ball, knocking out Solrock. Very clutch. I switch Kevin out to Bob, who takes a hard Psychic as Joe uses Light Screen. I double switch to Dan and Sam as Lunatone hits another Psychic on Dan. I then switch Dan into Sally as Sam goes for a return. Sally gets hit by a Psychic, which crits, breaking through the Light Screen and killing Sally. It's unfortunate, but it was bound to happen eventually. And, well, it's a Spinda. I'll be fine. Dan and Sam take out the Lunatone with Steel Wing and return, winning us the seventh gym badge. The last gym leader is Juan in Sutopolis, but now that Sandy the Swablu is back on the team, he really just doesn't stand a chance. I lead Sam as Juan leads Love Disc. 
It uses Attract, as I set up with Bulk Up. I decide to see if I can break through with an attack, and I do, which knocks out the Love Disk. Wishcash comes out, so I set up another Bulk Up. Then Wishcash uses Amnesia, and that's Checkmate. I Encore him into Amnesia, set up a few more Bulk Ups for good measure, and then clear through the rest of Juan's team. If you haven't gathered it from my other videos, Encore is an incredible move for Nuzlocke, especially on a Pokemon like Sam that can set itself up for a sweep. With all 8 gym badges obtained, it's time to take on the Elite Four. Here's my final team, all leveled up to level 55 to match Drake's Salamence. Let's see if we've got what it takes. First is Sydney, so I lead Bob the Lanoon. I set up a substitute as Mighty Anna goes for a sand attack. Then, I go for a Belly Drum, which halves my attack, but maxes out my health. Then, Secret Power just sweeps through Sydney's entire team. It's possible to actually make this Belly Drum strategy work for every single Elite Four member and the champion if you have the right amount of setup. I did a whole video about sweeping with a single Lanoon that you should definitely check out if you haven't seen it already. But I don't have all the tools to do a full Lanoon sweep here, so we'll need to be a little more creative. Next up is Phoebe. She leads Dusclops and I lead Kevin. Phoebe always starts with a Protect, so I use Substitute. Then, two Shadow Balls knock out the Dusclops as it just tries to use Confuse Ray. I'm pretty sure the Emerald AI doesn't really know how to deal with Substitute. Bainit comes out, but it isn't able to break the Substitute with Feint Attack, so it dies and we still have our Substitute intact. Next is Sableye, who uses a double team. But I still manage to hit all my Shadow Balls. Sableye is able to break my sub and do some tiny damage, but he goes down. Next is the second Bainit, who hits me with a Facade to change my type back into Normal type. A few Shadow Balls takes it out. Last is Dusclops, so I set up a Substitute and then hit a Shadow Ball. A Citrus Berry means that he'll survive another Shadow Ball. So just for fun, I decide to get some other team members involved. I switch to Dan on an Earthquake, and then to Joe on an Ice Beam. I Toxic Dusclops with Joe, and then switch to Sandy on the Earthquake. From here, I just stall the Dusclops out until it slowly succumbs to a painful death by poison. Could you imagine how terrible that would be? I mean, I guess Dusclops is already dead, but it's still gotta hurt to slowly die from poison. Well, that's Phoebe defeated. Next up is Glacia, but since she always uses Hail with her Celio, I lead Sam, and then I use Bulk Up. Then I Encore it into Hail, set up a few more Bulk Ups, and then use Return to sweep through her entire team. Again, this would be much harder with a Slay King that had to loaf around every other turn, so that's why I kept Sam as a Vigoroth. The final Elite Four member is Drake, but he leads with a Shellgon that always starts with a Protect, so this is an easy win. I could use Bob or Sam here, but I decide that it's more insulting to beat Drake's powerful dragon Pokemon with Hoenn's regional rodent. So after a substitute and a belly drum, Bob uses secret power to knock out all of Drake's dragons. With that, we've beaten the Elite Four, and it's time to face the champion Wallace. At this point though, it's pretty clear that we could easily win. So I decide to have a little bit of fun and try to set up a kill for Sandy the Swablu. I lead Kevin, and Wallace leads Wailord. He sets up Brain Dance as I use Rock Tomb to lower his speed. Then I use a few substitutes to start wasting his Water Spout PP. Once I'm out of health to make a substitute, I switch to Joe and keep stalling him out of his PP. I use Rest and a Chesto Berry to stay healthy. This goes on for a while. On the turn that I anticipate a full restore, I switch to Sandy. I use Protect, and then I switch back to Joe to keep stalling. Eventually, we get to the point where I need to sacrifice Joe but it'll all be worth it when we get that sweet, sweet kill with Sandy the Swablu. Sandy uses a few growls on Wailord, who's now doing basically nothing with all of his attacks. And then finally, I click Paris Song, a move that will cause Wailord to faint in three turns as long as it doesn't switch out. I switch out to Bob as Wailord's Parish counter falls to two. On the next turn, I switch to Substitute and Wailord's Parish counter falls to one. Unfortunately, the AI is smart enough to recognize that it's the last turn of Parish Song and it switches out ruining my entire plan to get Sandy a kill in the champion fight. That's a bit of a bummer. It also means that Joe kinda died for nothing. Well, whatever. Secret powers from Bob kill all of Wallace's Pokemon. But what's the point? Sandy will never know the joy of being part of a team now that her hard-earned kill was robbed from her. Pretty uncool, Wallace. Next time, just man up and take the Paris song. Well, that's the end of the run. It was a pretty straightforward run, and it wasn't super difficult. But Emerald is always a really fun game to play, so I'm always happy to take on an Emerald Nuzlocke challenge. Anyways, if you enjoyed watching this video, please like the video and subscribe. Or don't. I don't know. But either way, thanks so much for watching, and thanks so much for all the support you have all given me.
If I could individually thank all my viewers, I would. My next challenge will be a viewer requested challenge. Turner Ring suggested that I try Pokemon Emerald with ground types only, so that's what's next. I know there's been a lot of suggestions and requests, and I'll do my best to get to all of them, including some ROM hacks and streaming on Twitch. My channel has grown a lot quicker than I really ever could have imagined, so I'm still trying to figure it all out. So any suggestions you all have would be greatly appreciated. Thanks again for watching, and remember to always, always, always play around the critical hit.